What's up with everybody? It's your man Moya B. And Nicole. And we're back here with some more reaction videos. Um, this is a special video request from Matthew, Matthew Mann. Man. What is up? <laughs> Thanks for the support. Another one. Another one, man. Another one. <laughs> so, Matthew Mann wanted us to check out Stranded from the Ottoman Empire. Well, I say Ottoman Empire. Ottoman Slave Trade. <laughs> Um, yeah, this is gonna be interesting. Yeah, I think I might have heard the Ottoman slave trade. I heard a bunch of different slave trades, which slavery was like horrible. Mm -hmm. So, you like to say thank you for your thank support. You so much. Since their ethnogenesis hundreds of years ago, American blacks have become the most recognizable African ethnic group on the planet by far. Ask your average person to name just one ethnic group in Africa, and they probably couldn't do it. And it's difficult enough for most Americans to even recognize black Americans as an ethnic group because of the conflation in this country between ethnicity and race, which are two very different concepts mm -hmm. and possibly a video topic for another time. <laughs> the history of black Americans is one mired in struggle, but perseverance, and as I've mentioned in an older video, yeah, this particular group coalesced through hundreds of years of diverse African tribes intermixing into one group under a common identity and culture, but this is not the only group to have undergone this process. Obviously, slavery and warfare wasn't invented in the United States and probably wasn't even invented by humans, but one of the most historically and demographically significant long-term events to impact Afro-Eurasia was the Trans-Saharan slave trade between the Middle East and Sub-Saharan Africa, hmm. or what I like to call the Forgotten Slave Trade. In an old video, I stated that the African slave trade had such a huge genetic impact on the Middle East and North Africa that even Arabs as a whole in Syria, Jordan, and Iraq have a moderate degree of sub-Saharan admixture. And I guess yeah. people got upset yeah. at he this because that. I failed to mention that there was already African input in these groups even before the slave trade, which is true, especially for North Africans, seeing as how the bulk of the Maghreb and Sudan belong to E3B, a haplogroup with origins in the Horn. It's also been discovered that nearly 50% of the mitochondrial or maternal DNA of Yemeni Arabs is of Sub-Saharan African origin, hmm. and for yeah. other countries in the Gulf, such as Qatar, Bahrain, well, a lot of people and the got UAE, some African DNA this number yeah. hovers yeah. more around lot, 10 lot. to 20%. As I mentioned in a previous video, the dark-skinned Mehri, Shehri, and Sokotri people of South Arabia do not have a significant amount of African admixture, and most likely their unique complexion is a result of being a part of a remnant Australoid population, or is simply a phenotypic anomaly brought about by natural selection. Hmm. The Trans-Saharan slave trade has been proven to vastly dwarf that of the Atlantic slave trade in terms of total volume wow. and every other aspect. Although, I as I discussed in a previous that. video, you know, many of the slaves during the Islamic age were young Christian boys conscripted from Europe, especially the Slavic realm, including Russians, Bulgarians, and Serbs. And in fact, the English word slave actually has its etymological origins in the word Slav. And for those of you thinking that they castrated all of the men, this is simply not true. Castrating men leads to a drastic reduction mm. in testosterone, mm. which greatly interferes with muscle development and impairs all sorts of mental faculties, yeah. which leads to pretty crappy soldiers. Huh, so by and large, the men that were enslaved game in Europe and Africa yeah. became janissaries or were castrated and became scribes or advisors. Although janissaries were generally taken as children and trained until young adulthood, many men were conscripted in Ottoman forces as adults, often voluntarily when their territory fell under Ottoman control. And this was the case for a group of Hungarians who formed their own rank in the Ottoman army and aided in the conquest of Egypt, eventually settling in the Upper Nile region after the war was won. Additionally, an unfathomably high number of Slavs, Albanians, oh, and Greeks settled in Anatolia first during Turkish Ottoman fighter, rule, pilot. of which many certainly were former mm -hmm. slaves or soldiers. And today, a significant amount of the Turkish gene pool is shared with the Balkans, not only due to previous genetic ties with the region, but also due to the more recent migration and assimilation throughout the centuries of Ottoman dominance over southeastern Europe. So, European slaves certainly had a very high political, genetic, and cultural impact on the Middle East and North Africa, but for the most part, other than the Magyar Arabs in the Upper Nile and tiny pockets of ethnic Greeks scattered throughout the region, there are no distinct ethnic groups in any of these countries with a white or European identity, as their descendants were able to blend into the population and assimilate, often reaching high social positions such as Tunisian Prime Minister Beji Kayed Sebi, whose great-grandfather was a slave from Sardinia in Italy. 
However, because of the obvious vast phenotypic differences between Middle Easterners and Sub-Saharan Africans, the effects of the Trans-Saharan slave trade have been much more profound and enduring than the European slave trade. Even over the span of hundreds of years, the African communities and the countries still stand in stark contrast to the general population, and although divisions are being eroded, even in more integrated countries, a sort of hierarchy has developed along racial lines. For instance, countries like Sudan and Mauritania are a blend of African and Arab blood, although there is still a large segment of the population of unmixed Arab descent and so-called black African descent, although I prefer not to use that term as the so-called black African populations are very, very different from each other. Yeah. But nonetheless, these countries yeah. are examples of Arabization of regions with a non-Caucasian population, as although the Maghreb and Egypt were also Arabized, their base populations were similar enough phenotypically that there's little difference in appearance between Arabs and Arabized Berbers in the present day. Oh, the Trans-Saharan slave trade has been same. going on yeah. for like, thousands of years northern, now, and this has yielded many the interesting same, so results with communities of African yeah. or at least Africa, partial African ancestry mm -hmm. scattered throughout the Middle East due to the Omani, Abbasid, Persian, and Ottoman empires, with perhaps one of the largest being in present-day Yemen and the far south, only a stone's throw away from the Horn. As I mentioned, Yemeni Arabs already have a large amount of African admixture when compared to other Arabs, but there is still a community in the country known as al aqdam although this term, which literally translates to servant from Arabic, is considered derogatory by most in the community. The Akdam have been in the country for hundreds of years, are overwhelmingly practitioners of Islam, either from the Horn or the Swahili coast, although judging by their appearance, they almost certainly have an affinity with the Bantu peoples of East Africa. There's also a decent sized group of African descent in southern Iran near the Gulf, and although there are no approximations on the size of this group, I personally estimate that around 60 to 300,000 Iranians have African ancestry hmm. from these former okay. slaves and other African migrants, and their ancestors were slaves facilitated through Arab, Ottoman, or even Portuguese merchants, and it's quite astounding that some African slaves even reached as far as parts of South Asia, where their descendants are known as the Sidis. Sidis are southeastern Bantus and may have significant amounts of South Asian, Portuguese, or Arab ancestry, and are scattered throughout the like more like black, in really. Pakistan, mm -hmm. Karnataka in India, and the west coast of Sri Lanka, with the community split between Muslim, Hindu, and Christian populations. One of the most well-documented consequences of African slaves was a large-scale rebellion in Iraq in the 9th century AD, where the local African population near the city of Basra, known collectively as the Zanj, along with their low-caste Arab allies, revolted against plantation-style chattel slavery and the mistreatment of the lower class. And although the rebellion was put down by the local Abbasid forces, conditions did improve for the Zanj community thereafter. The community is actually still mm, present in Iraq down. today, and although the Zanj are not quite as segregated as they were in the past, they are still mostly an endogamous community considered ethnically distinct from the surrounding Arab tribes, and around 5-10% to 10 of the city of Basra today is of Zanj origins. This brings us to the African slaves scattered throughout the Middle East facilitated by the Ottoman Empire, who are located in some of the most least likely of places. One interesting remnant population lies in a former Soviet territory in the Caucasus huh. known as Abkhazia, which is internationally recognized as a part of Georgia, but as a de facto independent state since 1993. Oh, Most likely natives living in Abkhazia imported African slaves during the 17th century, and they were freed a couple hundred years later, although intermarriage has significantly culled their population, and today the black population in Abkhazia has shrunk to the point of nearly being invisible. Wow. There oh. were other much so smaller basically numbers like of intermarrying with all like right. other parts of Asia, yeah. along with some scattered throughout Greece, Montenegro, and elsewhere in Europe in minuscule numbers, and in the following century most of these communities either fled to Anatolia or were absorbed in the population through intermixing, with it nearly being impossible to determine the numbers seeing as to how their genetics would have been so thoroughly dispersed. However, the largest number of Africans in the former Ottoman Empire has to be in Anatolia, with varying estimates on the number of 
Afro-Turks, but needless to say, substantial communities still exist in large cities such as Izmir, Mula, Aydin, and Istanbul. Now, the reason I compared these African groups in the Middle East to black Americans in the United States at the start of the video is because in a similar manner to blacks in America, the various African ethnic groups that sprung up across the Middle East are often very diverse in their origins, with ancestors from the Horn, the Swahili coast, and even Central Africa, with the Central African Republic being one of the most heavily hit areas. Over time, the various ethnic divisions that existed between these African groups were eroded, and they coalesced into a single gene pool, depending on the region, with the Afro-Iranian gene pool, Afro-Iraqi, and Afro-Turkish gene pool, all clearly being very different due to the fragmented nature of Africans in the Middle East. And over time, rather than identifying with any one ethnic group from their homeland, they simply resorted to the identity of black, or in their cases, Akdam or Zanj. The gene pool of these Middle Eastern Africans is not quite as diverse or robust as the blacks of America, the Caribbean, or Latin America, as the majority of slaves were still taken from the eastern coast of Africa. Despite being different in appearance, the Akdam, Zanj, and other African groups in the Middle East are overwhelmingly Islamic and speak the local language of the country they inhabit, such as Arabic, Persian, or Turkish, although it is not uncommon to hear words unique to their vocabulary of Swahili, Somali, or other African African origin, although again this is highly variable by region. All in all, although their concrete numbers may be small, those who acknowledge at least Not some Yemen. recent African heritage yeah. in the region include perhaps up to 4% of Turkey, 6% of Iraq, and 10% of Saudi Arabia, meaning they could easily number several million, despite being invisible in western depictions of the Middle East. So from what can be gathered, the world's second largest African diaspora after the American product of hundreds of years of what can safely be called the world's most discreet slave trade, well, at least in the Western world. And although many of these groups of African or partial African origin in the region have experienced heavy discrimination, in recent years many in the Arab world have accepted their Islamic identity as more important, and some even call them fellow Arabs, despite the clear differences in appearance. Yeah. So please let me know your thoughts thoughts on the descendants of the Ottoman and Middle Eastern slave trades, and for today's poll, tell me which modern community piques your interest the most. And as always, this has been Mason. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you next time. Yeah, man, I mean, a whole lot of those, like, um, surrounding areas and people, people over those areas have, like, African DNA in them. I yeah. mean, if you think about it, man, most everybody originated from Africa. That's what scientists really believe. You know, everybody came from Africa at one point in time, and then you know, all these groups start like separating to like different regions of the world and then like, maybe their appearance change to adapt to their like area. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. to adapt to the area. So but I guess he was trying to compare like some of the people over there to like you know, you know, the black people over here, like how they like like I guess similar and look a little bit. Well he was saying and it's DNA, well DNA have a lot of like different like um you know, um he was saying it's similar in the sense of like it was a bunch of different cultures yeah, well, yeah, yeah, of Africans yeah. that went into those countries, but then over the years, basically, it's you've assimilated to the current country, basically. Yeah. So even though like you're black Americans, black Americans, technically they probably you know you all came from a different various tribes yeah, and cultures yeah. in Africa, but yeah. at this point. No one assimilates with that. You assimilate uh, you, with your culture yeah, here. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. That's kind of what he was comparing it to. Yeah. But it's different because those that are in Turkey assimilate with the Turkey cult Turkish culture and yeah. the Pakistan and Iranian, and, and they're all mostly Islamic because yeah. that's the culture. Yeah. So it's interesting. Much. Yeah. Instead uh, of claiming their culture that they originally came from. Yeah, what they originally came mm -hmm. from. I mean, it's crazy, man. Like, slavery, especially, like, slavery, it was just, like, horrible. And think about the stuff they did, and it just... Yeah. sickening to think about I mean but yeah I understand like you know different like you know black people from different tribes mm -hmm. during the time like I said it came from like you know different like like right. cultures and stuff yeah. so but now like people black people very really assimilate it's one culture mm -hmm. and stuff pretty much everybody like white people somebody is one culture right. Asians is one culture exactly. you know Mexicans is one culture you know I didn't realize there was such a big slave trade from Africa into the Middle East like that. Yeah, it was a lot of them. It's, so, it's the Atlantic yeah. slave trade, the one with black well, people. Well, that was, heard. yeah. That, I and then, South uh, America. Yeah, I know. Uh, I think it's the um, Arab slave trade. I heard about That's that. That's what he was talking about. Yeah, that was real horrible, too. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, 
I think I think the Atlantic slave trade and the Arab slave trade is one of the worst. Well, I think know? that's what he was talking yeah, about. Yeah, that was the yeah, Ottoman yeah, one. yeah, the Ottoman, yeah. yeah. Well, I always called it like the, the Arab slave trade, but I guess that could be I the think other that name was for the same it. thing, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I think there's been like there's also was a Europe slave trade, European slave trade a yeah. little bit, but I don't think that was anywhere near the yeah um, American or the yeah. Well, the problem is it was like chattel slavery. It was just, chattel slavery is horrible. It's like it's like you know what black people went through. I mean, you had Irish people come over here and they was like said like indentured servants, so they want to treat it as bad as like black slave. I mean, I'm sure some was treated bad, mm-hmm. some was whipped, but not to the degree like how black people was, you know, like. When you was a denture servant, you can come over here for seven. You can be a servant for seven years, and then you have to be let loose free. Which child slavery for black people, you was a slave for life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Unless your slave masters let you go with free papers or something like that. Yeah, man, definitely a great video, yeah, man. Really interesting. Thank uh, you for the suggestion. Yeah, man, make some man. man. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Matthew, man, thank you mm-hmm. for this uh, video suggestion, and thank you for supporting our channel. You rock, man. You mm-hmm. awesome. Thank you. But we're about to get in this video. I really hope you enjoy our reaction. Um, if you want to support the channel, you want to leave us a special video request, check out the link to our stream live. It's going to be in our description and it's going to be in our YouTube video cards. Make sure to keep the videos under 12 minutes and provide the link. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe and thumbs it up. Turn on notifications. It's your memory of B. And Nicole. We're going to catch you on the next day. Awesome. Peace and love, baby.